Welcome back to another instalment of New Zealand Bird of the Week, where in this video I will be talking about the Chatham Island duck, an enigmatic duck species that has now become extinct. I hope you enjoy. Chatham Island ducks are an extinct species of waterfowl, which as indicated from their name, lived on the main island in the Chatham Island group of islands, alongside eight species of waterfowl prehistorically. These birds were sturdily built, comparable in size to the unrelated Paradise Shell Duck, with similarly long legs, but differing in possessing a longer bill and shorter wings. As these birds are now extinct, the ecology of these birds can only be speculated upon in the absence of live birds. Despite this, key anatomical features do give some insight into the lives of these birds, in particular, the pronounced rugose enlargement to the tip of the carpo metacarpus. This carpal knob is equal in size to those found in much larger waterfowl, like steamer ducks, than compared to all other New Zealand waterfowl. This area of enlarged bone growth implies that like other birds that possess this feature, Chatham Island ducks would have used their carpal knobs as weapons against other ducks, and relative to their body size, were the largest in any member of the Anseriforms, indicating a substantial selection pressure, likely down to the smaller habitats that the birds lived in, in turn, favouring more competitive birds. Birds that possess these enlarged carpal knobs, like the steamer ducks, maintain a long-term pair bond and occupy a territory year-round, with both sexes defending their territory fiercely, something which can also be attributed to the unrelated Chatham Island duck. In terms of whether or not these birds were flightless or not, some studies have deemed the birds as potentially capable of flight, but from comparisons of known flightless relatives like the Auckland and Campbell Island teal, which have diminished sternums and keels like the Chatham Island duck, alongside disproportionately short distal wing bones indicates that they were more than likely flightless. The bill of the species was typical of a dabbling duck, and so it is presumed that they would have fed on food items in the extensive brackish Tifanga lagoon that dominates Chatham Island. The birds also have impressions for salt glands on the top of the skull, which indicates that they would have spent time in salt water, with a flightless lifestyle suggesting a sessile and predictable food supply would have been available year-round. Given the size of Chatham Island being 920 square kilometres, the birds would have been restricted in distribution and would not have been numerous. This vulnerability meant that when a Maori landed on Chatham Island in the 16th century, their flightless nature and decent size meant that they were easy prey, and with their restricted habitats and low numbers, it wasn't long before they went extinct entirely, with no record of coloration or vocals. I thank you for watching this instalment of New Zealand Bird of the Week. For next time, you are now able to vote for the Spotsless Crake, an elusive wading bird that is closely related to the Marsh Crake. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.